Hey guys, Adrian Mans here. You had a couple of questions about the first hour trading pit this morning, about how a couple of the trades were handled, didn't quite understand uh, how these played out over the course of the first half hour, 45 minutes or so. So I wanna go through them with you right now. So the first one was H-O-M-E. Let's take a look at the chart here. We can see that in the case of home, the textbook entry would have been above the highs of the deepest bar in the pullback, right? So we would have been looking at like a 987 entry and then we would have targeted, you know, somewhere up in here where something significant happened. That's not how this one played out. So on the advanced entry on this one, what I was looking for was the inflection down below the close of the first bar, the open of the second bar. You remember I called your attention to the fact that it was really showing uh, quite a bit of price support there initially. And then of course, we targeted up around $10.02 on the trade made about 39 cents per share. That was a nice inflection trade. You could take big shares because the uh, stock trades at nine bucks. I've got no problem trading low dollar stocks with the Baltimore Chop 2 standard deviation opening gap setups. It's a powerful setup and it works just as well with a low dollar stock as it does with a high dollar stock. In fact, in my opinion, sometimes it works better. Then we had SFIX, another one that uh, led to a bit of confusion this was primarily uh, due to the fact that there were different entries by different people in the room. So you all know that uh, Goran had an entry that was up in here somewhere and that I had my entry down here. So now Goran had said in the room that you know he, he was trying to put his trade together, hit the button early and, and actually got triggered in earlier than he wanted to. I was waiting for that 2837 low to happen because I didn't like a whole lot of this stuff that was going on in here. I didn't like the way these bars were extending up into the top of the range, told me that uh, it might have trouble breaking down. I was willing to wait for the 2837 print, and when I got it, the target that we were looking for, this was another thing that you know had a few people confused, $27.56 in the room when I drew it, it came up $28 or $27.51. That's not that big a difference, right? So don't get too focused on the minutia. Look at the spirit of the trade. Go back, review the gap course, make sure that you understand everything that's in there. And I think these things will come together in a big, big hurry for you. And then finally, there was a question about Tesla. If you look at the Tesla setup from uh, yesterday's bands and you see where it was trading, it was trading down in this range, right? These were really um, areas that were of interest going into today's session. And once everything was bracketed up, it's much more specific than that, of course, but once those brackets were in place, then the stock gapped up today. And really what you had to do was go through and start looking at where does Tesla make sense as a trade today. Now, the opening range on this stock is not something that I'm ever too interested in trading. And that is because it tends to, um, it tends to have some very wide spreads. And you guys know I'm not an opponent of a big spread, but I'm not necessarily crazy about having dollar spreads on a stock that's as volatile as Tesla. So what I was waiting for was a move. And in fact, we got a move right out of the open here. We had a move to the upside. And once the stock was up and trending into this range, we had a very good set of volatility bands that we could look at over the course of the morning, All right? We were able to keep adding significant levels of interest. So if you look at the volume by price data over on the right side of the chart here, you can see my volatility bands line up pretty nicely with this stuff. And that's just eyeballing it right here for the video. So in the morning when I'm doing the work in the room and I'm talking you through these things, I'm paying particular attention to the fact that this gapped higher, it held the gap. And once it came down and was bumping on this stuff and the, uh, the price was firming up and the spread was firming up, you know, move up into this range that gives you these lows and these highs that are so clearly defined and that overlap so well with this stuff over here. That makes that an easy trade to go and just pick off some range bound moves while it's in the volatility bands. And that is why it was set differently than it was from the trading plan last night. You'll see the same thing happen on Apple, on BABA, right? If they gap, 
it's a whole different story. Look at them in the pre-market, see where they're trading, try to get some bands put together from the pre-market data, figure out what it is that you're going to focus on once you're open, get those brackets constructed, get the conditional orders out there. You shouldn't have a problem pulling off these trades. If you have any other questions, shoot me an email, adrian at traderinsight.com. Hope you had a great trading day today and an even better one on deck for tomorrow. This is the best trader education anywhere, only from traderinsight.com.